lunch. I can't cook anyway. I want to do something exciting. Yes, radio location. Or on a gun or a bummer or something. Well, I think I'd like to be a cook. Be a cook? But whatever for? Because you can't win a war without cooks. <laughs> This is where they make the bread for the American Expeditionary Force in Northern Ireland. Once upon a time, a number of these army bakers were bricklayers and concrete mixers. Ignoring the chance for a dirty crack, here's news for the housewife. The flour they're using is the real old-fashioned white stuff they used to put in our loaves. Brought from America, it makes bread just like Mommy used to make. Folding it, slapping it, rolling it and kneading it, they produce the kind of dough the doughboys need to make 100% American-type bread. some vegetables and a valuable part of the family menu for buying. Aye, housewives will be sorely tried if the spuds suddenly vanished. That's why volunteers for the potato harvest do a really important job. This year Scotland will produce one and a half million tons of potatoes and just because sufficient spare labour doesn't exist the children are again asked to help. 54,000 of them. It may mean a week or two off school of course but the need is a serious one. And fresh air's a grand tonic. Oh aye, and they're paid at the rate of one and a penny per hour, mind. And don't think that they're allowed to run wild. Maybe they do have grand fun, but they're carefully looked after by teachers and others. So don't hesitate to let your son or daughter volunteer to help with the potato harvest. Under the War Office scheme, she can learn to become the perfect wife at an LCC training school. Not the old way, with poor hubby as a sort of human guinea pig for early experiments, but under the guidance of an expert, who can always help when things get sticky. What's this? Add a quart of cream. Can't be right. Better try mix the ingredients thoroughly. How's that pie getting on? Hmm, looks pretty good. There's one husband at least who, when he gets home, won't need to whistle, Ma, I miss your apple pie. How science and the Canadian farmer help to feed Britain. Dabbling in eggs to the tune of 20 million a month is the business of this dehydration plant. First of all, the eggs are broken. Each girl cracking 6,000 an hour. Maybe you wouldn't turn your nose up at a job like this, but some have to. Not a snifter must get by. Yolks and whites travel to the mixing room. And to think we used to dip fingers of bread into them. Now the mixture is forced through a nozzle under 6,000 pounds pressure into a huge heated drying cone, dropping to the bottom in powdered form and ready for packing. At this point, officials will tell you that it's hard to detect the difference between powdered and shell eggs. Well, I'm not fussy, but I'd knock my grandmother down for a new laid cackleberry. Every year, as winter approaches and the cows come in, milk production starts to fall, until by Christmas, it's at its lowest for the year. During this period, the supply to the priority classes must be maintained. Last year, the babies, the young children and their mothers were guaranteed one pint per day. This year, there are two new priority classes. Five million pints of milk a day are needed for these two classes. Think of the Navy, Army and Air Force. Well, that's just what the Navy, Army and Air Force Institute is doing. And Naffy is putting in the real stuff. Good old quartermaster. Don't like to match anybody. They've been studying the Christmas pudding recipe for years. And for the boys who can't get home to mother, they know just what's wanted. From the kitchens at Aldershot, they go out to Gibraltar, Malta, Alexandria and Singapore. They go out to carry a message. Ah, somebody has lit a match. They go out to carry a message of good cheer from the home country. 
What's it like, boys? Any good? Well, you've said it. Little packets of Christmas preparing to go round the world. In 1938, we do want your Christmas pudding. 